just want to welcome everybody this afternoon uh, for this really wonderful, wonderful occasion. Uh, it was just a pleasure to talk about. This is really the fun part of the job, is to get together for really great occasions and for great people. Uh, so welcome to the dedication of the Florence Sabin Professorship in Infectious Diseases and the instant installation of the inaugural recipient, Dr. Amita Gupta. My name is Nadia Hansel, and I currently serve as the Interim Director of the Department of Medicine. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you um, for joining us, to Dr. Stephen Ganji in particular, Interim Provost, Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Johns Hopkins University, Dr. Ted DeWees, Interim Dean and CEO of Johns Hopkins Medicine, and other distinguished guests with us today. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Amita Gupta and her wonderful family, her wife, Dr. Charlotte Sumner, their son, Austin, Dr. Gupta's parents, Raj and Kamla, as well as her sister, Vanita, and with her husband, Chin, and their children, Rohan and, and Chetan. I'm just glad that all of you could join us today to celebrate Amita. Most of all, welcome to, Dr., uh, to David Haas and his wife, Lisa Clark, and the Wincote Foundation, who are joining us virtually today. We can't see you, but uh, really hope uh, that you are able to participate and view this ceremony. Thank you for your generosity, your visionary partnership, and for the recognition of Dr. Amita Gupta with this distinct honor and holding the inaugural Dr. Florence Sabian Professorship in Infectious Diseases. Amita, this is a wonderful occasion for you and for the Department of Medicine. Your service to Johns Hopkins has been remarkable, not only for your patients, but to the, inst to the institution. You have made a global impact with infectious disease research and many leadership positions internally, externally, currently serving with my great pleasure that we get to partner together as the Director of Division of Infectious Diseases and co-chair the Faculty Steering Committee of the Johns Hopkins Gupta Klins Klinsky India Institute, among the many other hats and accomplishments that you have accomplished. Your accomplishments are many, your accomplishments are many, and I know that Dr. Ganji, Dr. DeWeese, and Dr. Bollinger will be sharing more of them with us today. Very much congratulations. It is as, uh, also an honor to be holding such a, a chair named after such an am amazing uh, pr female professor uh, in the history of medicine. Congratulations on this wonderful occasion. I would like to invite Dr. DeWeese to the podium to introduce and present the Dr. Florence Sabin Professorship in Infectious Diseases to Dr. Ganji. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Thank you, uh, Nadia, very much. What a wonderful day. Welcome, everybody, uh, to this dedication, as you've heard, of the Dr. Florence Sabin Professorship and its most worthy inaugural recipient, Dr. Amita, Dr. Amita Gupta. Amita, congratulations to you on this. Uh, and as noted by uh, Dr. Hansel, I also want to very personally thank uh, David Haas and the Wincote Foundation for their support of this really very important professorship. Uh, it goes a long ways to doing what it is we feel strongly about at Hopkins, uh, is to support the best and the brightest in the world of medicine. And Dr. Gupta rec uh, is a real reflection of that goal and objective that we have. So the Winco Foundation, thank you very much. And to that end, I think everyone in this room knows, but endowed professorships are critical to ultimately the mission of the university and the School of Medicine because they do provide us the opportunity to, to recruit, they provide us the opportunity to retain, uh, the best people, as I've already noted, but that flexibility that comes along with having an endowed professorship so the faculty member that holds it can focus a bit more of their time instead of just generating their own support to doing the things we want, driving the discovery mission to improve human health, to translate that into the best care for patients, and ultimately to support and train the next generation of leaders in infectious diseases. And so to the Winco Foundation for all of that, thank you. And please know, of course, uh, to uh, Mr. Haas and the, and the foundation that this professorship, like all, will long be well after anyone in this room is gone. This will perpetuate forever. Now this, one, this professorship, beyond my personal affection for Amita, uh, means a great deal to me because it's after Dr. Florence Sabin. 
uh, who you've already noted was the first female professor of Johns Hopkins. She was a graduate of this medical school. Uh, she then went on to become the first woman member of the National Academy of Sciences. She then was the first full member of the Rockefeller Institute. And most importantly, she's a native of the great state of Colorado. <laughs> and uh, I happen to be, you know, modestly <laughs> part of that. I went to medical school at the University of Colorado, and uh, I remember going to many lectures as a first and second year student in Sabin Auditorium. So Florence Sabin, I knew well about before I ever came to, to the mighty Johns Hopkins. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, when you look at all she accomplished, and perhaps I look in the mirror, uh, as a native Colorado, I'm a bit embarrassed about my relative lack of accomplishment, but nonetheless, I am really very, very happy that I'm being able to be here for this particular um, uh, installation. For those of you who are unfamiliar beyond those accolades I just provided, Dr. Sabin, she was the first who understood how it is the lymphatic system actually develops, really from veins out of the embryo and not some other direction. That was very important at the time, and it's still actually important as we think about immune systems now and targeting. Uh, she also was very important in infectious diseases, many other things. She worked with Franklin Mall here about understanding the cochlear system, the medulla, how it functioned, what its role in respiration was, um, and the immune system's role in tuberculosis. And after her retirement, she moved back to the great state of Colorado <laughs> and uh, became the director, uh, one of the first actually, the Department of Health in Colorado. And for those of us who worked at what was then called Denver General Hospital, which is a, um, an element of that Department of Health, she's storied history um, there. And she oversaw tuberculosis incidents, driving them down from a high in the mid-50s per 100,000 to the low 20s per 100,000. And again, very famous in the context of Colorado. So I think all of that and these firsts align perfectly with our nominee for this uh, role today and the inaugural recipient of it. Um, Amita specializes in international public health, uh, clinical research, education in infectious diseases, particularly focusing on HIV AIDS, but also antimicrobial resistance in tuberculosis, as it turns out. And her work has been primarily focused um, in an international domain, India in particular, and she leads several Indo-JHU collaborations, including as co-chair of the faculty steering committee for the Hopkins Gupta Klinsky India Institute. Um, she's had more than 200 publications. You've been working hard. Uh, <laughs> book chapters. Most importantly, I think, really in, in many ways, the context of today is mentoring, as I noted, the future leaders in infectious disease, dozens and dozens who have gone on to other important positions. Um, the support of Mr. Haas and the Winco Foundation has established this endowed professorship, and it's been crucial as well, their, their work, to support the Center for Clinical Global Health Education, which Bob Bollinger has founded and where Amita has served as a deputy director. Um, Dr. Gupta's career is focused on strengthening public health, just like uh, Dr. Sabin, and particularly working towards health equity, which I think also, if you're a native of Colorado, know what she was trying to do with a population of immigrants in that state. So thank you to David, to Lisa, the Wincote Foundation for your generosity in advancing this mission. And the other deep connection here, of course, with Dr. Sabin as a woman with a lot of firsts, um, in the storied division of infectious diseases in the great Department of Medicine, Amita will be the first woman to lead that great division of infectious diseases. So another important link. So Amita, I know you'll hear many more things about you today. Uh, we're honored for you to be part of this Johns Hopkins family in its leadership role, again, driving that division to its next great um, accomplishments. Congratulations on that achievement. So at this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Ganges, the interim provost from Hopkins, to join me at the podium. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with this process, uh, endowments are held and administered by the university, of, uh, university trustees, so all professorships have to be formally um, presented to the university. So Provost Ganji, as executive vice dean of the Johns Hopkins, whoops, that's not right. <laughs> that is not right. Um, provost of the university, I present to you 
the Florence Sabin Professorship in Infectious Diseases. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Ted, and I am pleased to formally accept uh, the Florence Sabin Professorship in Infectious Diseases on behalf of Johns Hopkins University. Um, this really is an exciting day. Uh, it's an honor to be here to celebrate uh, Amida uh, with the generosity of uh, David Haas and the Wincoat Foundation. Uh, I know we have many people who are joining us here, uh, uh, not only here in Baltimore, but across the world uh, on the live stream. And so I want to thank you all in the ether uh, for joining us today. Uh, the, the Haas family has a, has a long history of, of generosity. Uh, with Otto Rahm, the uh, Otto Haas co-founded the Rahm and Haas uh, company, which was a chemical and plastics company in 1907. In 1945, Otto and his wife, Phoebe Waterman Haas, uh, uh, who actually was one of the earliest American women to receive a doctorate in astronomy, which I know our incoming provost is gonna be highly interested in, uh, founded the William Penn Foundation. And their son, John Haas, and his wife, Chara, and their four children, including David Haas, founded the uh, Wincote Foundation, named after the town that John and Chara raised their children in in 2009. David and his wife, Lisa Clark, share a passion for addressing global socioeconomic inequality and recognize the impact that Dr. Amita Gupta's career has had on improving outcomes, treatment, and education of infectious diseases around the world. Movingly, they chose to name the professorship after Florence Sabin, the first female full professor at Johns Hopkins uh, School of Medicine. Um, some of you might know that while serving as interim provost, I've spent nearly 30 years working in the area of infectious diseases. And in fact, infectious diseases is the division where I hold my joint appointment uh, with medicine. So this makes uh, this professorship uh, extremely special. Um, indeed, the professorship's namesake and I have a common history. Uh, the young Florence Sabin had hoped for a career as a pianist but on entering her high school years, she was frankly informed that her musical talents were merely average, which led her to pivoting her career as a scientist. Right? I, too, was told in no uncertain terms that my musical talent, or the lack of it, did not warrant a, warrant a career in music, which led me to pursue uh, uh, science and math as well. And we're all very fortunate that Florence Sabin pursued those scientific interests. Uh, one History describes her career as someone who carved out not one, but three different careers. One as a teacher, one as a research scientist, and a third as a crusader for better public health uh, in her uh, beloved state of Colorado. Uh, and of course, doing this at a time when being a leader in medicine uh, was extremely difficult for women to build a career. Amita, I, I, I really think uh, this, this background of Florence uh, Sabin uh, fully reflects your own career. Like Dr. Sabin, you've been an impactful mentor uh, to, clinic, to clinicians and trainees in uh, infectious disease and are now leading the division. And I know in all the work together, uh, you've been uh, uh, forceful of bringing uh, more students from India into research and here to Johns Hopkins. Like Dr. Sabin, you're an international leader in the treatment, prevention, and control of infectious diseases. Florence Sabin contributed to our understanding of the lymphatic system, as, as uh, Ted indicated, but also was noted for her role in combating tuberculosis. Your work uh, echoes and builds upon her legacy in important ways. I'm sure she would be thrilled to know the first recipient of her professorship uh, is the primary investigator of a large clinical trial to assess treatments for preventing people at high risk uh, for developing multidrug resistant TB taking place in 12 countries around the world, including Botswana, Thailand, and India. And like Dr. Sabin, you are a crusader for better public health. In her third career, Florence Sabin overhauled Colorado's public health laws and had a substantial impact on tuberculosis and syphilis across the, uh, uh, across the state. During the last several years, you have persevered to establish and advance the work of the Gupta Klinsky Institute in India. I've seen your passion, energy, and dedication, and can't wait to see how the initiative continues to grow 
and flourish. Uh, Florence Sabin has a quote back from 1929 uh, in which she's attributed to saying, I hope my studies may be an encouragement to other women, especially to young women, to devote their lives to the larger interests of the mind. It is very meaningful for Johns Hopkins to have this professorship named after Dr. Sabin, and I cannot think of a better inaugural recipient. Amita, congratulations. So now I think we are uh, going to see a very brief video. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Akshay Gupte. I am an assistant professor of global health at uh, Boston University. And I have known Amita since uh, 2011 when I came uh, to Hopkins for an MBH degree. And Amita kindly agreed to take me on as one of our trainees. And um, this continued throughout my PhD work, as well as my postdoctoral fellowship. Um, and when I was thinking about what to say, uh, say in this video, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was that one minute is, is really too little time to talk about Amita. It, it, it truly is. Um, the, the second thing that came to my mind was that her enthusiasm for infectious disease research truly is infectious. And she has managed to transmit her uh, her dedication, commitment, and, and absolute integrity to all of her trainees. And I was really privileged to, uh, to have been able to work with her for so many years. And even now, um, she still finds the time to meet with me regularly and help me through many of my ongoing projects. Uh, so Amita, a uh, huge congratulations on this, uh, this truly remarkable achievement. Uh, well, well deserved, and uh, I uh, I look forward to our uh, next brainstorming session. Thank you. Congratulations, Amita! I cannot think of someone more appropriate to be the first recipient for the Florence Sabin Professorship. I've said this to you many times before, but I will say it to you again. I would not be where I am today without you. You took me under your wing when you really didn't need to, um, and you helped me develop into a confident version of myself that I never thought I could be. You've been a role model and an inspiration to me for almost 15 years now, and I can't wait to see what you do next. I'm sure it will be fabulous as usual. Congratulations again. Hi, everyone. I'm Rupak Shivakodi, a faculty at Columbia University. I was previously a postdoctoral fellow with Dr. Amita Gupta, uh, one of the earlier ones, I think. Uh, so first, I, I just really want to say congratulations to you, Amita, on this well-deserved endowed professorship. Uh, this is very exciting and really, I think, speaks to your accomplishments as a clinician, researcher, and especially as a mentor. Um, I, I want to thank you uh, for, for the effort and time in, in guiding me as a trainee. Uh, and even now as a faculty. Uh, so really, uh, thank you for being an amazing mentor and congratulations. Dear Amita, I am extremely proud of your outstanding achievement as the first Indian origin and first woman of color Johns Hopkins Infectious Disease Division Chair and now the inaugural Florence Sabine Endowed Professor. As Florence Sabine, who was the first women professor at Hopkins, you also have achieved many firsts. A visionary and founding faculty chairs of Johns Hopkins, Gupta Klinsky India Institute, lead of Center for Infectious Diseases in India, a leading TB, HIV and IV clinician scientist of Indian origin, and a diligent taskmaster with wide ranging interest and at the same time, a fun-loving person, a rare combination to be found in this modern, fast-paced world. I am truly thankful to have a genius mentor like you. You taught me to work smart, be fueled by ambition and dream. You have been there for me to listen, to offer advice, and to help me find solutions to various problems. 
I will never forget your dedication to my success. Thanks for being such an excellent mentor and a caring colleague. Our shared vision to establish and create a world-class physical infrastructure in Pune to generate research evidence and to train young investigators is about to be realized. And I truly believe this will have a lasting effect on how research will be conducted and program support will be delivered here in India. I'm sorry I cannot be there to celebrate your success today. I am grateful, however, for the wonderful journey for the past 13 years as a leader and director of our co-created and co-developed clinical research program in India. Your guidance has made a positive difference in my life and among lives of many junior scientists in Johns Hopkins and our group in India. Thank you once again and congratulations. Hi everyone, I am Sonia Krishnan, one of Dr. Gupta's mentees. It is such an honor to be asked to say a few words. Let me first start by congratulating Dr. Gupta on the receipt of the Dr. Florence Sabin Professorship. I first met her in December of 2019 when I was the ID fellow and she was the faculty on consult service. I was immediately struck by her intelligence, enthusiasm, unending energy, and dedication to patient care. As we spoke more, I learned that we had shared interests in global health, TB, and HIV. This was someone who I wanted to be when I grew up. I immediately latched on to her and have not let go since. Amita, there are so many words that I could use to describe you as a mentor and a sponsor. You are so thoughtful and caring. You are patient. You hold your mentee to high standards in a manner that helps them to not only excel, but exceed their own expectations. You have been by my side during some of the most difficult times of my life. Most importantly, you are a valued friend. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your leadership during these years. I'm so happy that we have been able to celebrate you today. So thank you. Uh, I'm Bob Bollinger, Professor of Infectious Diseases, um, and it's my pleasure to uh, also uh, begin by thanking uh, David and Lisa. David and Lisa, um, I, I remember vividly our meeting back in October, I think it was 2014, having lunch with Raj and um, Leslie Bernard, and, and um, where this conversation began about um, you know, supporting professorships here at the School of Medicine. And uh, here we are today uh, with this wonderful, wonderful ceremony to, uh, to uh, you know, memorialize that, that contribution and that generosity. Also, welcome to the family. Um, happy to have uh, Austin and Charlotte and Raj and Kamla and the, re the rest of the family here today. I'm sure you're really proud, like I am, to be here. Um, so. Um, I, I think uh, we've heard already about some of the parallels between uh, uh, Dr. Sabin's career and Dr. Gupta's career. Um, in March 2022, I was asked for some suggestions for the naming of this professorship. So I was really very, very happy to hear that uh, my suggestion to Florence Sabin was ultimately chosen by you, David, and the Wincote Foundation. I mean, her contributions to Hopkins to the science we've already talked about. Uh, Professor Saban was an obvious and terrific choice uh, to be honored in this way. I was also, of course, uh, uh, even more happy uh, and proud that Dr. Mita Gupta was chosen as the inaugural Florence Saban Professor. In, my, uh, in addition to my great admiration and respect for both Dr. Saban and Dr. Gupta, you know, it's occurred to me that, as we've heard already, that Professor Saban and our inaugural uh, Florence Saban Professor have a lot in common. Um, both were precocious and, as I understand, very active children, right, Kamala? Uh, both had uh, fathers, George Sabin and Raj Gupta, who were engineers. Um, both of them um, had, as we heard uh, about Dr. Sabin, initial interest and in careers outside of science and medicine. Um, 
as you've, as you've heard, have you, as you've heard, Professor Sabin was a good pianist, but not great. Professor Gupta was a good tennis player, but not great. Um, we were, as, uh, as we heard from Stephen, uh, we're fortunate that both of them uh, went, uh, pivoted uh, from those initial careers and, and pursued science. Um, both Professor Sabin and Dr. Uh, Professor Gupta benefited from top educational uh, opportunities. Professor Sabin earned her bachelor's degree from Smith College in 1893. A century later, uh, in 1991, uh, Professor Gupta re received her bachelor's degree in material science and engineering from MIT. Uh, both of them took some what we call gap time uh, before medical school. Professor Sabin uh, went back to the great state of Colorado and taught mathematics for two years in Denver and another year of zoology at Smith to help pay for her subsequent medical school. Uh, Professor Gupta spent her gap year as a public health officer at the AIDS Bureau of the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. Uh, as we also heard, Dr. Sabin um, uh, enrolled at Johns Hopkins uh, in 1896 and was one of the 14 women in her class and graduated in 1900. 97 years later, Professor Gupta graduated with her MD from Harvard Medical School. Both had important postdoctoral training. As we also heard, uh, in 1901, Professor Sabin was recruited by Franklin Payne Mall, the, the first head of the anatomy department at Johns Hopkins, to join his department as a postdoctoral fellow. And uh, Professor Gupta was an internal medicine and primary care intern and resident at UCSF. Both uh, Professor Sabin and Gupta, as, we both, as we've also heard, eventually joined the Hopkins faculty. But as we'll see, Dr. Gupta had a more non-traditional trajectory. Um, after being recruited by uh, Dr. Maul and completing her fellowship, as we heard, Dr. Sabin became uh, the first woman to serve as a faculty member at Johns Hopkins. She was associate professor in 1905, became the first female full professor in 1917, I think of any medical school, not just Johns Hopkins. Um, in 2002, Professor Gupta had been completing two years uh, as an as a EIS officer at the CDC when I recruited her to come to Hopkins to help me with our program in India. Um, she initially spent a year as a clinical associate and then a year as an instructor in the Division of Infectious Diseases. But in 2004, she did something I, I don't think anybody at Hopkins has ever done. She took a large pay cut, a loss of benefits, a professional demotion to leave a faculty position and spend a clinical year as a postdoctoral fellow in order to become board certified in infectious diseases. Uh, the following year, she became associate prof assistant professor and joined me, as, as we heard, as a deputy director of the newly established CCGHE. And she, by the way, at the same time, did an MPH, uh, Master's in Health Science at, at Bloomberg during that same year. She progressed uh, through Hopkins, uh, promoted to associate professor in 2011, then full professor in 2019, and then uh, as you heard in 2022, 20 years after I recruited her, she became my boss, uh, <laughs> the chief of the Division of Infectious Diseases. Um, as we also heard, both Professor Sabin and Gupta had distinguished research careers. They both worked on tuber tuberculosis. So on the left here is uh, Dr. Sa part of Dr. Sabin's bio bibliography, uh, and on the right is Dr. Gupta's. And I just happened to pull up this one uh, reference here, cellular reaction to fraction isolate from tuberculous back, uh, bacilli. As we heard, she was, Dr. Sabin was focused on looking at inflammation, immune responses to HIV, I, I mean to tuberculosis. If you look at uh, just the last page of Dr. Gupta's CV, you'll see a few papers that look at the inflammation and the immune response to tuberculosis. So 100 years later, that tradition continues. Um, Dr. Gupta has made major contributions to the understanding of HIV, tuberculosis, many infectious diseases. She has over 250 publications. She's also been recognized internationally as a leader in TB research with a special focus on TB and pregnancy. She, as we heard, established um, and led many, many uh, HIV and TB uh, Indo-US research collaborations funded by the NIH, CDC, multiple foundations, and the government of India. Uh, both Dr. Gupta and Dr. Sabin's bibliographies in CV reflect a long commitment to collaborative research as well as to mentorship. More than 50 mentees from the US and India in Dr. Gupta's case. 
Um, as we heard, uh, after retiring from Rockefeller, Dr. Sabin uh, moved back to the great state of Colorado and uh, implemented um, and supported measures to reduce the incidence rate of tuberculosis in, in the great state of Colorado. Um, and as we heard, like Professor Sabin, Dr. Gupta's work has led to improving TB prevention, to diagnosis and treatment, has informed TB prevention and care guidelines. She's been recognized by many national and international organizations for her leadership and expertise in TB and HIV research. And I also know that Dr. Gupta's efforts have contributed to saving and, improve, and improving many, many lives in India and beyond. There's another thing uh, that, um, that uh, both uh, Dr. Professor Sabin and Gupta have in common. They were both, they're both activists. As we heard early in her career, Professor Sabin volunteered at uh, the evening dispensary for working women and girls in Baltimore. She helped with the letter writing campaigns for the National Women's Party and editorial work for a weekly suffragette magazine. She donated time to the evening dispensary for working women and girls here in Baltimore. Anyone that knows Professor Gupta knows that her activism and passionate commitment to social justice is not simply reflected in her arrest record, <laughs> uh, but, has, but has been long-standing and is part of her DNA. Both Professor Sabin and Gupta, as we also heard, were strong advocates for women in science. Um, this is a, a quote from an article that uh, Florence Sabin wrote in Science Magazine. Um, and uh, I'll point out, I'll highlight this section here. She lay, she's referring to Miss Garrett's legacy. Uh, laid down the conditions which were to be met, namely a college degree or its equivalent, a knowledge of physics, chemistry, biology, proficiency in foreign languages, and the admission of women on the same terms as, as, as men. Miss Garrett's legacy that began with Florence Sabin continues today, a century later, through the support of the Wincote Foundation and Johns Hopkins and their recognition of leaders like Dr. Gupta. A little bit more on her advocacy. Now, um, Dr. Sabin was to, is, quote, is described this way. She's years ahead of her thinking. Uh, she ha says such earth-shaking things in such a soft voice. Now, I would describe Dr. Gupta as she's years ahead of us in her thinking. She says such earth-shaking things. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> <clears throat> and finally, uh, both Dr. S uh, Sabin and Gupta like to party. Uh, this is one of the descriptions of uh, Dr. Sabin. Love for classical music, philosophy, travel, good books, and memorable din dinner parties. I describe Dr. S uh, Gupta as having a love for dance, music, social justice, travel, good friends, and memorable dinner parties. Um, Howard, don't misunderstand. Both Dr. Sabin and Gupta were and are committed to fun combined with tremendous work ethic. They both work incredibly hard. I'm sure Dr. Sabin, if she were with us today, she, like Dr. Gupta, would be, committed, would be a committed multitasker and would be sending emails and text messages between 3 and 4 a.m., even when she's on vacation in Mallorca. I don't know if you guys knew this. In summary, uh, the careers of Professor Florence Sabin and Professor Amita Gupta reflect the shared qualities of scientific brilliance, vision, leadership, compassion, commitment to social justice, activism, and humanity. Uh, so it's with great honor and privilege to introduce uh, my friend, my colleague, my boss, and the inaugural Florence Sabin Professor of Infectious Disease, Dr. Amita Gupta. Fabulous, Bob, thank you for that. By the way, so two things. One, can you wire me up with Martina? Because <laughs> I, she's like one of my heroes. Secondly, Bob, if you could get the mugshot from the arrest, because I may, you know, that helps a dean at certain points in time. And so that would be helpful to me. Thank you for that. 
But Buck, thank you. That was fabulous. Thank you for all of that. And um, you know, we've heard from a lot of people today, I mean, about your accomplishments. Uh, we could have said more, but they do reflect truly, I think, the best of Johns Hopkins and who we think we are and what we aspire to be. So thank you for that. Please join me. So as a leader in the field of, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah this, this time really do it. As a leader in the field of infectious diseases and at Hopkins, I mean, you are poised to continue to lead our internationally renowned, internationally renowned, Division of Infectious Diseases in the great Department of Medicine at Johns Hopkins. The entirety of Hopkins, and I think you've heard those cheers, um, is so proud to have witnessed all that you've done, but mostly what you will continue to do for all of us, for the patients we serve around the world. So, on behalf of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine, I'm very pleased to present this medallion to you, Dr. Gupta, as a symbol of this honor and in celebration of your installation as the inaugural recipient of the Dr. Florence Sabin Professorship in Infectious Diseases. Congratulations, my friend. Well, I'm standing between you and the bar, um, but really, thank you. This, uh, this is a very, very special moment, and I couldn't be here without all of the love and support of everyone in this room. <clears throat> it's truly an honor to be here to accept the Florence Sabin Professorship in Infectious Diseases. Thank you, uh, Provost Ganji, Dean DeWeese, uh, Department Chair Nadia Hansel, Bob Bollinger, my guru and mentor for now all essentially almost uh, two and a half decades, and many of you here. And of course, I want to thank my, um, my incredible wife, who in, is an inspiration in her own right, my son, Austin. <laughs> she helped me on my first paper and grant, just so you know. And it was painful. Um, and I also want to thank my parents who are here, who've really been an incredible inspiration and support. Um, thanks, Dad and Mom, for being here. Um, my sister and her wonderful husband and two boys who are here, who came out of school to join. And importantly, I really want to thank the wonderful words of the mentees. Um, wow, you know, what more does one want when you have mentees who sort of really um, inspire you, teach you, and are here for you? Um, and that's, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled. And some of them are here who you saw in the video. So thank you for, for being here, Sonia, Jyoti, Akshay Rupak, Matt, Jeff, Vidya, and team. I'm also very appreciative um, to all of you, um, the Division of Infectious Diseases. It's been my home for 20 years. I've had the chance to uh, be taught and learn from all of you each and every day. Um, it's an incredible, incredible group of people. And it's the reason I have stayed here for 20 years. It's because of the people. Uh, whether it's the faculty, the staff, the nurses, uh, the, you know, you think about just really why does someone stay in a place? Uh, well, it's really the people. There's history, of course, and there's reputation, but it's the people. So we'll say more about that in a few minutes. I'm also truly grateful uh, to David Haas and the Wincott Foundation for establishing this professorship, naming it after a true pioneer and a role model for women in medicine and public health. Um, I know David and is online along with his partner, Lisa Clark, so thank you, David, uh, for, for being here. Um, David's really been a tremendous supporter of community, environment, arts, media, and health, and it's really meaningful that he and his foundation have established this professorship. He recognized the importance of fighting infectious diseases both locally and globally, and he also humbly wanted this in the name of an important woman in medicine, which I really congratulate them for uh, really thinking of this honor. So as you already heard, Dr. Sabin was uh, admitted to the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine because of philanthropy. And actually, Mary Elizabeth Garrett, whose painting is there on the wall, right there to my left, 
um, was the, one of the founding donors. She provided over a little over $300,000 to establish uh, the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine on the condition that women get admitted as in the same terms as men. And that's really remarkable, if you think about this, in 1893 when she, she made that donation. And it was the very donation that allowed Francis Sabin to come here and do so many firsts and go on to do so many firsts. So thank you to Mary Elizabeth Garrett for your foundational donation. And it's thanks to philanthropists such as her who think about how to really make a way forward for women and for men and beyond. I'm also humbly um, honored to be permanently associated with this professorship because of all of the amazing things that she has done. As you heard, she's a tour de force in medicine, public health, teaching, um, uh, and even politics. She led by example and was a trailblazer. And I don't need to repeat all the firsts that she did. But what I really admired about her was her humility, her care of early stage investigators, and her work hard, play hard ethic, which I can relate to. <laughs> so I joined Hopkins in 2003, when at the time, Julie Gerbeting, who was the director of the CDC, actually, uh, I told her I was looking for a job and needed to move to the DC area because my, at that point, uh, my a girlfriend, uh, Charlotte, was there, and I wanted to go be in the DC area. So she called up John Bartlett, and John Bartlett uh, arranged a visit for me. And he said he listened to what I was interested in, and he quickly arranged meetings with Bob, Cindy Sears, uh, and Jeannie Carulli. Um, and that's because I was looking to sort of see if I could find a way to work at Hopkins doing international work, um, as well as uh, get back into clinical care. And all of them laid out a plethora of activities. Bob had a grant, um, an NIH grant, to conduct a phase three prevention of uh, mother-to-child transmission, and he needed help. And Jeannie Carulli was looking for somebody to work in the HIV clinic. And so together, they came together and said, we'll give you 50%, 50%, come on board, and we'll see how this goes. And I've never looked back. I've loved working in India and in the HIV clinic. And I also have been incredibly fortunate that I, they made a backdoor entrance to the ID fellowship uh, so that I could uh, get trained and also get an M a, a master's in health uh, sciences. And so I've spent my career here. I've grown up here. I've been nurtured here. I've been loved here. And I hope to love back as much as I can to everyone in this room and beyond. It was in those early years where I really learned what a special place Hopkins is. And I'm looking at Sarah here. I remember learning antibiotic stewardship from Sarah Cosgrove, world expert. Um, I got to work with Paul Alwater, who is a walking textbook. Um, I got to work with um, Dave Thomas, who then went on to become the division chief and, and really paved the way with mentorship. There is Cindy Sears, Robin Avery, Joel Blankson, Michael Milia, Chloe Theo, Khalil Ghanem, and the list goes on. I, Jonathan Zenelman, Ann Rampalo. I mean, it was incredible. It's always been incredible, and we're going to keep it that way, and we're going to grow it to be even better. I also had the chance to learn about clinical research. There's Tom Quinn, Charlie Flexner, um, uh, Dick Chason, Yuka Manabe, to name a few. Under the incredible mentorship of Bob Bollinger and the support of Jane McKenzie White, where's Jane? Um, she's come back from retirement to say hi. Um, and her team, Molly Bowen, uh, Gabriella Smith, Matt Reasoner, Matt Williams, Rose Warlick, and, and, and Ruth Harley and others, I found a home in the Center for Clinical Global Health Education. And I've been able to focus my career in international health and uh, research, particularly in India. Bob, thank you for being such an amazing mentor. Thank you. He, along with Jane, created a home where faculty, students, staff alike could thrive, whether it be here in Baltimore or in India or in Sub-Saharan Africa, wherever you were. He introduced me to working in India. In fact, he knows more about India than I ever will. He introduced me to the incredible NIH networks, uh, the AIDS Clinical Trials Group and the International Maternal Pediatric AIDS Clinical Trials Network. And through those networks, really, I sort of got to meet people from all over the world. And then in 2012, he dropped a bomb and said, you're going to take over this program that I've helped to build, and you're going to take it where you want. I'm going to, be out, I'm going to step out of the way. And that is an incredible, generous mentor. 
So I got to work with pregnant women living with HIV and their infants, and that really inspired me to work in tuberculosis, learn about women and children, and how we can make a difference. Since then, uh, since Hopkins has one of the best TB research centers, I soon connected with several incredible mentors and researchers, such as Dick Chason, Jonathan Golub, Bill Bashai, Eric Neumberger, Manang Shah, Petrus Karakousis, Kelly Dooley, to name just a few. I also recruited Vidya Mave, who you saw in the film, and she was an ID-trained faculty from Tulane wanting to go back to India to go be with her family, but she wanted to continue working in ID in India, and so I was very lucky to recruit her. And since then, it's been in a real ride. We've just basically tried to do whatever we can and however we could, ethically and legally. Um, I did not get arrested. Um, and uh, we've sort of really worked to expand our research, training, and education. Um, and so being part of the Indo-US clinical research program has been one of my truly life-defining um, adventures, which I'm now um, hoping to bring to the ID division. Um, so in terms of, um, uh, uh, I'm really um, proud of how the work has grown and of all the mentees, and I know many of you, I'm hoping to drag you to India, uh, kicking and screaming, and being part of our research and education program, but importantly for the division. I am so humbled and honored to be here, to, be, uh, to serve you. Um, what an incredible group of people here in this division. Um, I, I was a little bit in awe when I was named the director of the Division of Infectious Diseases in February 2022. Um, and, uh, you know, to sort of lead such an amazing division of people and honestly superstars. Um, ID at Hopkins has a very long and proud history, and Dr. Sabin, as you know, um, herself worked in, in infectious diseases, but so did William Welch, who's pictured here, who's one of the big four, and he was one of the founding professors, and he worked in pneumonia and diphtheria. And then since 1956, when we established the Division of Infectious Diseases, um, it's been led by six previous directors, including John Bartlett, who helped me get here, and Dave Thomas, um, one of the most impactful hepatitis C scholars and winner of many mentoring awards. He, in fact, helped me to make important connections, including to the provost at the time, Sunil Kumar, to strategize and make possible my vision, as he's done for so many others in this division. So thank you, Dave, for your mentorship and sponsorship. <laughs> I'm deeply indebted. So with 100 faculty and 500 total members, the Division of Infectious Diseases is changing the world we live in and making a difference. To name just a few highlights, we've shortened the WHO recommended treatment for TB research thanks to the mouse model work of Eric Nuremberg and the trials led by Dick Chase Son and team. Under the leadership of Mark Sokowski and Dave Thomas, we've led landmark clinical trials that have cured hepatitis C and made it essentially a problem that we don't see much of in our clinic. So thank you, Mark, for all of your incredible work. Our scientists, Janet and Bob Silicano, discovered the HIV reservoir and the many reasons of why it's going to be difficult to cure HIV. Um, we've got Khalil Ghanem, who's won more teaching awards than anyone else in the School of Medicine. We've got Stuart Ray, who will tell you all about data integrity, and don't let him <laughs> tell you he can't share your data. He will find a way. Um, we have Christine Durand, who's a tour de force for finding us a way to really transform transplant oncology infectious diseases and runs our transplant research center. And then, of course, there are people like Lisa Maragakis and the whole hospital epi infection control team that really, along with Sarah and Valerie and many, many others, who really fought for us during COVID-19, along with Paul making all the guidelines. So thank you. And then, of course, if that's not enough, our DEI, our diversity, equity, and inclusion, we have the stars in our division. We have Domini Piggott, who runs the Vivian Scholars Initiative, which is an incredible initiative to uh, promote PhD scholars from historically black universities. Risha Irvin, who's just taken on a big role for the hospital to lead our DII initiatives and also runs the DII initiatives for um, the department. And then our two internal medicine programs. Uh, our finest Osler medicine program run by Natasha Chida and our internal medicine program at Bayview run by Erica Johnson. Those are just some of the highlights and I could go on and on and on. It's really amazing. So um, I just wanted to tell you and end that on 2022 was one of our most successful years in sponsored research. We accounted for 12 and a half percent of the entire School of Medicine budget in terms of sponsored research. 
Go Infectious Diseases. <laughs> and, you know, we have to think about, look, ID is at a, at a real crossroads right now. Programs are not filling. Uh, you know, ID physicians, even though we were so important during the COVID epidemic and were appreciated as were epidemiologists and the like, we're not filling our programs. And so we need to train and find ways to really inspire the next generation. Infectious diseases is incredibly important and we must find a way to continue to support the young um, inspired individuals, the fellows, our, our faculty. Here at Hopkins, I'm incredibly lucky. We have 33 junior faculty and 12 infectious diseases fellows. So the pipeline is strong and it's an incredible group. So please um, come and visit us. Um, we really want to invest in the next generation. So I'll end by saying thank you so much to this incredible family at Johns Hopkins, uh, to my own family who's come uh, from various places, my colleagues, uh, my CDC friends who came uh, on a special visit and who we've, we're always bonded, my best friend from medical school, Jillian, and, um, and, and to all of you who are here really to honor Frommel and Sabin and really humbly I accept to serve you as the Division of Infectious Diseases and to make this an incredible place not only here in Baltimore but across the world. So thank you so much for giving me this honor. I just get a minute to give closing remarks. Um, Amita, you're a very special person. So I really, this was an amazing celebration today. I would like to thank David Haas and the Wincote Foundation for allowing the recognition of this very special day. I've learned a little bit about Florence Sabin actually today. I've learned a little bit about you today, actually. <laughs> uh, and one thing that really just came out to me, one, the generosity and the humility. I mean, I've done a few of these now, not that many, but a few, um, and I never heard whooping from the crowd that I think just shows the amount of support that you have um, from your colleagues and from your friends and from your family, and I think you're the first who really um, took the entire time uh, to say thank you and acknowledge the accomplishments of others uh, when today is really about you. Uh, and so I think that says a lot. You're a fabulous leader. Uh, we are lucky to have you as leading the Division of Infectious Disease. Um, we're lucky to have you as a friend and as a colleague. Uh, to Raj and Kamla, like, I, I need to take some lessons on how to raise such, such amazing, um, strong, passionate women. And for all of you who may have heard the State of Department address uh, last week, we have still work to do in terms of the promotion of winning, uh, women along the professorship pathway. So this is just very special, both to honor you, Amita, and in honor of Florence Sabin as the first female uh, full professor. And so let's celebrate together. I hope you have the opportunity to stay. Uh, and thanks again to David Haas and Wincote Foundation for making this all possible. Thank you, Amita. <laughs>